Hey, what is going on guys? Good morning everyone, by the way. And I finally found a pocket of time to actually make this video. You know, having a kid <laughs> leaves you with very, very little time and every minute is extremely precious. <laughs> so I'm just gonna quickly uh, do a video on how you can use the combined framework to actually make a network request. So combined framework is a new framework that is um, out about six months ago. And it is it, it kind of replaces Rx Swift, I believe. So it is a, a, a framework that helps you with a reactive way of programming. So I've learned this over the weekend and I thought that, hey, this is a pretty powerful framework. And I think that if you are, if you are starting out or, or, or if you are a developer at any uh, points of your career, I think the reactive way of thinking should be something that you should really check out and master. All right, so without further ado, I'm going to build an app today that uses the, the combined framework to make an API call and populate that data onto a table view. All right, so we need an endpoint, do, don't we? All right, so over here in Google, I've searched for JSON free API. And in the first result, there is one that says JSON placeholder fake online REST API for developers. And I personally find that this is really good and i would suggest that you check it out as well if you just want to test uh, uh some uh some endpoints to 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 um to play around with it all right so let's go over to the bottom and i'm going to use the slash users endpoint and clicking on this on this it loads a json uh, file here which gives me an array of users so we have eight items or get oh ten items all right so there are 10 users and this is how one of the object will look like. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna show the name of the user as well as the name of his company, okay, to populate on the table view. All right, so let's open up our trusty Xcode. Okay, let's bring that in and we're gonna create a single view application and I'm gonna call this combined networking users, okay? And let's store it in my iOS projects folder. As you can tell, I've done many test projects over the years. <laughs> let's click the create button. Okay, you can store your project uh, anywhere you want. And the first thing we're gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna take this endpoint over here. And oh, before I forget, I just wanna show you Postman, all right? So if you're a developer and you don't know how to use Postman or you have not heard what Postman is, then please, Check it out. Please learn how to use Postman. It will really, really benefit you. So what this, what Postman does is that it allows you to make uh, uh, HTTP calls. You know, over here we have all the different um, uh, request types. Over here, I'm gonna make a get request. Paste this right in. Paste this over here. Hit the send button, and this is exactly the same as you see over here. So um, yeah. So if you if you do not know how to use Postman, uh, you can just leave a comment on the section below to say that, hey, I don't know how to use Postman. Could you do a lesson on Postman? And I will do a lesson uh, about Postman if, if uh, enough people are asking for it. All right, so we're gonna take this endpoint over here and I'm going to just copy it right here. Private, private let URL string equals to this, okay? so. Over here, we this is a view controller. We don't want a view controller. We want a table view controller. So I'm going to delete this. Click the plus button. Hit on table view controller. Put it right here. And I also will add or uh, embed a navigation controller. So all I have to do is to go to the the editor uh, menu item. Go to embed in and select navigation controller. And boom, it show, it's it's embedded with a navigation controller right there. Okay, before I forget, we have to make this the initial view controller. Otherwise, when you run the simulator, nothing's going to show up. Let's just quickly run this and we should see something. Okay, while this is running up, let's make a couple of change over here. Um, is it running? Yeah, all right. <laughs> the table view controller is loaded. Okay, we're going to change this over here. UI table view controller. And we're gonna call this users table view controller. Okay, just gonna copy this, come to the storyboard, 
come over to here, not the, not the navigation controller, but the table view controller. Click on the top button here, come over here and just paste this in. All right, so now the storyboard is connected with this user's table view controller. All right, so we're just gonna create some, uh, some I don't know what you call it, mockups. Uh, number of, of, okay, we need this. Let's return five table view, cell for row. Okay, so let cell equals to UI table view cell. Let's initialize this. And for the style, you know, we can choose all the different styles, okay? So we're gonna use subtitle and for the use identifier, we're gonna cre create this as, we're gonna set as nail and we're gonna return the cell. All right, let me make this even bigger. Okay, so let's just do cell dot text, label dot text. Let's put, let's put in something over here. Let's put in the uh, index path, shall we? Okay, let's run this and I should see the, yep, all right, we have the zero, one, two, three, four, cause we have only five. And also let me just remove the footer. So set up table views, private func, uh, table view, oops, not this one, table view dot footer equals to UI view. So by doing this, I will get rid of the footer at the bottom. All right, so we don't see any of this random stuff over here. Okay, let's come to the meat of the lesson. We are going to create a class and um, let me see, do we need a class or a strut? I think let's use a strut, all right. So let's do a strut and this is gonna be of type user. Let's make this decodable because we are gonna use the uh, JSON decodable. And let's have a look again at how uh, the payload of this JSON. So we have the, okay, we have the name and we also have the company. So we want the name of the user as well as the company of the user. How's that? Is that cool? All right, so we're gonna have the name Oops, so let name string, and we are gonna have the company as well. All right, so we're gonna make this decodable, and the company has also a name. Okay, yeah, let's just use name as well, all right. Oops, name, and over here, let company, this off type company. Cool, very simple, very easy to understand. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a data manager. Okay, you can, you can call it like a API manager, H HTTP manager, or you know, whatever that you want. And let's put in the string over here. And let's create a, okay, so before I, 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 I type any further, let me just quickly give you an overview of how, uh, what are the basic tenants of the combined framework. So in essence, it, just, just just know this, okay? Publisher versus subscriber. So the publisher is like a radio station, okay? So it, what, what does it do? It emits airwaves, <laughs> all right? And as a subscriber, that means you at home or in the car, what do you do? You have a radio, you know, and it receives, air, is it airwaves? <laughs> yeah, so basically a publisher, publish stuff, a subscriber listens to it and consumes whatever that the publisher is sending out. Okay, in, 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 this, in, in this case, it's not airwaves, it's actually data, all right? It emits data and it receives data. All right, so let's create a user's publisher. Okay, this will be of type any publisher. Okay, don't see that yet because we have not import the combined framework. Okay, this is going to be any publisher and the signature is going to be user and error. Okay, this is very similar to, you know, if you use the result type in Swift 5, you have, you can do the same thing as well. User and then error, correct? All right, so it's going to be like that. Okay, so let URL equals to URL. Okay, we need a URL. Where are you? All right, so we're going to go URL string. Let's force unwrap it. And then we're gonna return. So okay, so we're gonna return any publisher, all right? So we're gonna do URL session dot shared. Okay, so this is the one that we typically use, right? 
But now with combine, we're going to use uh, this one right here. Okay, so URL. Okay, and dot. Okay, so what do we need to do? We need to do dot map. Okay, so map allow us to map one of these uh, properties over here. We want the data. Okay, and we're going to do decode. So this is going to be of type user dot self. Very similar to how we do it uh, conventionally. And the decoder will be JSON decoder. Okay, let me just make this a little bit neater. Hit the map down, hit this down. And then we're going to do erase to publisher. Okay, so one thing that you can do as well is to, um, you, you know how when we make uh, uh, an asynchronous call, it, it, it moves to the background thread, and then when we get the data, we move it to the main thread, right? So typically we use like dispatch dispatchq.main.async, but in combine, we have another way to do it, which, which is the receive method, okay? The syntax is a bit foreign to me, but this is how it is, okay? So very simple, did I miss anything out? No. It's good. Okay, so what's next? So now I'm going to fetch users. Private func, fetch users. Okay, and um, over here, what we're gonna do is that, as mentioned over here, you need a subscriber to listen to a publisher. So we're gonna create a subscriber. So we go private var users subscriber and this has to be of type any cancelable okay so we have a subscribers equals to data manager dot okay notice that this is users users publisher is a publisher and then we're gonna do um, dot sync so sync is the function for you to receive from the publisher and you see over here there's actually uh if i hit the enter button there's actually two callback over here one is called receive completion and the second one is receive value so receive completion ha is, is being called when the operation is completed uh at this time we donate it i'm gonna keep it as uh make it empty okay let me just bring this down and receive value we're going to receive okay so you see over here this is an array of users so it's users right okay so i'm gonna create a var users this will be an empty array and i'm gonna do a did set okay so very similar to how we used to do it users equals to users okay so what it means is that the moment um uh the subscriber receives the data or the users from the publisher we're going to assign that into our uh, local property over here, which is users over here. And when that happens, we want to reload the table view. Okay. So I think the last part is right here. We don't need this anymore. So we will do let user equals to self.users index path dot item. Okay. Oh, before that, let me not forget to do this or it will crash dot count and uh, let's have a look so users let's have it the name and cell dot detail label dot text equals to user dot company dot name all right guys moment of truth let's run this and hope that nothing crashes <laughs> All right, so it works, and uh, I think that's pretty much how you do it. I think there are other other um, cool features uh, in the combined framework as well. So do uh, check out the uh, the documentation. Though I, I hate to to to, <laughs> to read the documentation because it's really so hard to to understand sometimes, and I really prefer video examples. And uh, over the weekend, I've checked out this um, video tutorial series on Udemy by Muhammad Azam. This is not an affiliate marketing link. But uh, I thought it was pretty decent. So uh, if you guys are interested, uh, do feel free to check it out. All right, guys, I think this is where it ends here. And I will see you next time.